Uh, good afternoon. This is Scott McGann with the Falmouth Health Department doing the weekly COVID-19 update. Today is September 25th, 2020. Uh, the Health Department can be reached at 495-7485. Our email is health at falmouthma.gov. And this update, along with other updates, is you can go to the falmouthmass.us website uh, and get links to the state, CDC, and uh, Falmouth's uh, this presentation, among others. So as far as today, there's 265 cases of COVID-19 since the beginning on March 19th, and these are confirmed cases, represent an individual who got a positive molecular or viral, what we also call PCR test. Um, there's been 12 confirmed cases during the period of September 16th to September 23rd, both local and out of area acquired, with about 95 plus uh, of all cases are no longer in isolation, with Falmouth having approximately 15% of, 15 of all cases in Barnstable County with 14% uh, expected based on population. Uh, the VNA and the CTC with the support, CTC is the, uh, is the state's contact uh, tracing collaborative, so um, they are help, they help the VNA, especially with um, those that have interstate or, or um, jurisdictions such as someone who's traveled and so forth. Um, so we do the performing the isolation and contact tracing on each case. So uh, this chart I, I put up every week and I circled it this week to show that from about June till today, you can see that we basically average around five or so cases. Sometimes we're on the high side of five, sometimes we're on the low side, with the exception of the end of July where we had the Royal Magansett uh, and also the lifeguard situation on the same week. Um, but in generally speaking, we've been averaging uh, around five. Some weeks, like in late August, we were down around zero. Um, we've been on the higher side of five over the last four weeks. And some of that's um, from travel, from uh, you know, the state just recently said that uh, kid, uh, students staying in colleges, that the case count will, will remain with the college. But some of these earlier ones uh, might have been test, were tested as um, going to college, going to another place. So we see the test, local resident, the test done somewhere else, a different state. And so some of those uh, were still in our numbers. For example, this morning, one dropped off because it went with the, uh, the university, the town in which the university was in. Um, but so, you know, a good fair number of these cases are local, so we do have you know we do have some local uh, cases, and we have you know again mixed in with some out of town ones. Um, but we're still sort of in that trend, you know, still sort of in the same sort of five plus or minus uh, per week. And you can see our case counts from the beginning. We're early on in April, you know, March, April. We were really uh, hitting it fast, getting a lot of cases. Uh, again, you know, in some increases around the nursing homes in basically late April, I mean, uh, late, mid to late May. Again, with the lifeguards you see in the uh, Royal Magansett over in late July, and sort of have these up in slight increases and then flattening out. Um, as far as the state's metrics that they come out every Wednesday, uh, gray is less than five cases. Green is less than four cases per 100,000, which for us, we have about 33,000 people, is about 1.33 cases or less per day would be where we would stay in green. So over two weeks, that'd be about 18. So about 18 or so cases. Uh, above that, we would go to the yellow, which is four to eight cases per 100,000. Uh, less than around uh, 18 or so cases, we would remain in the green. And you can see where... Um, we are. There are some towns that are like Nantucket that are in the red. Red Nantucket, for example, had a lot of cases relative to their population all in the last couple of weeks, uh, so they may remain in red. Um, so this is what uh, we use uh, for the school reopening as well, and I'll talk about that in a second. Here is uh, the numbers from Falmouth since 820. So we're at the percent positivity or the average daily incident rate per 100,000 over the last 14 days is 2.7, which is the same as what we had on the 16th. And again, these include all the locals and a few uh, non-local ones, which sometimes do fall off, but right now that number remains at 2.7. We had really good weeks at the late August, early September, and that's in the gray at the 0.5 and 0.9. If you see, you notice we have, uh, we're actually 1,803 tests uh, over the last 14 days, which is the highest number we've had. Actually, we have the highest testing in the town on the Cape. Uh, about 100 more than even Barnstable, which is a larger town than us. So we're doing a lot of testing, which is great. Our percent positivity remains under 1, which is key. It's at 0.83. It's a little on the higher side than we've had. Um, but for us, you know, comparing it to ourselves, it's on the higher side. But comparing it to the rest of the state, 
in general, um, we're usually doing pretty good. Uh, we're usually almost always lower than state. State this time is at 0.85. It's about the closest we've got to the state percent positivity. Uh, the incidence rate for the state is 4.9, so we remain you know, quite a bit lower than the state average, uh, but we were a little higher than the Barnstable County's average of 1.5. So down, we were at 2.7 there at 1.5 and a positivity at 0.62 for the county for the week, so we were slightly higher than the, the uh, county average. So again, we use this when we uh, talk about school reopenings and what phase we should be in. Uh, in person is recommended for yellow, I mean for gray and green, hybrid for yellow, and remote full for red. Um, so we're within, um, we're definitely still in the green with our 12 cases. And so that's kind of where we are as a town. Um, a little bit about the schools. The schools have uh, a new position uh, for a public health nurse that's going to help with the nurses. I've also added a nursing staff as well, which is going to be primarily helping us with the um, with, it, with school contact tracing, along with the VNA, of course. Um, so we've beefed it up uh, with, with nursing, uh, public health nursing, to uh, help any of the uh, situations that may, may or may not come up. Um, also, that my public health nurse is also going to help with the uh, flu clinics that we'll talk about in a little while. So that's good news. In terms of our testing, again, we're always a robust in our testing. Uh, we tested more than any other town on the Cape recently. Um, our percent positivity is a little higher than our normal. You obviously, you want to see the left-hand column be really dark, a lot of tests. Uh, the right-hand map, you want to see it as a light color, which is the percent positivity. So um, that trends, so then coming into the, uh, the county-wide numbers, you can see that the county had high numbers in April, May. Again, a blip, uh, a kick up around mid-July to early August, and it's sort of been flowing in that uh, we had one week, one day with 12 and 9, but mostly it's been less than 10 um, on a daily basis with a lot of zeros and ones, which is good. So there's been 1,957 cases confirmed and probable um, and 174 deaths in the county. Confirmed and probable would mean the different types of tests, and we'll talk about that with PCR tests versus antigen tests. Barnstable's case count for Thursday the 24th yesterday was six cases in the county. Their number is 1728. That's just the confirmed PCR test that takes out of the antigen test of the probables. That's why that number is different from the previous slide. And you can see, like with Essex County, they're having the higher numbers. Suffolk County, which, you know, it's also based on population, but uh, Essex has a lot less population than Suffolk, so you would say that Essex County is not doing as well as Suffolk. Um, and then so you see that we have six, you know, so we've been under the 10 for the most part, with no deaths, uh, at least yesterday. Uh, the state dashboard, which is updated every day at around 4 o'clock, except for Wednesdays when they do the weekly update, which usually pushes this off till sometime around 6 o'clock on, on, on Wednesday afternoons. Uh, the new reported cases for the day is 455 with 18,556 tests. So that's slightly higher than what we've normally been seeing. Around 20,000 tests, you've been around 350 or so, uh, with 15 confirmed deaths. Our total co uh, confirmed cases for the state is 120, just under 127,000 with 9,150 deaths. Um, with total of number of tests administrated, uh, 3.6 million uh, tests. So that's a lot of tests. We remain in the same status, uh, the uh, green, yellow, and red trends, um, with the death, rate still, the death rate still being in the yellow and in progress. Uh, it still hasn't gone down enough for it to turn green. And the healthcare system readiness, you know, the number of beds, the number of ventilators and things of that nature uh, still remain, but all the rest of them still remain. I think this has been a several, couple months, several months where it's sort of remained in this sort of uh, uh, yellow and green. As far as the percent positivity of all tests, this includes people that are being retested, such as healthcare workers and first responders, is at 0.8%. Again, we want to keep that number as low as possible, and it's been on a downward trend, which is great. The number of hospitalizations has been on an increase in you know, mid-September. We had 308, and we were averaging in that 320 to 340 range. And now we're above the 350 range now for about a week, so the hospitalizations. And that could be a function of a few nursing facilities, long-term care facilities throughout the state. That might be the reason why that has jumped. I don't have information on other towns. Um, but you can see that there's been a, a slight, we're about 22% over what the lowest attained value of 302 was on August 29th. So um, the hospitalizations are up, but that could be a function of several different incidences um, as well. Surge capacity has been staying around under four. 
um, the average deaths have been staying in that teens. Uh, we were down in that l mid August somewhere. I mean, early September of nine or ten. Then we were up around fifteen, and now we're sort of in that sort of mid teens, and we've sort of been consistent in that mid twelve to twenty count, ten to twenty count now for some time. So. Um, it's kind of status quo, not status quo, but it's probably been the same sort of numbers day to day, slight increase on case numbers um, and hospitalizations. Uh, as far as hospitalizations, we're at 375, which is up 63 from September 4th. Uh, Cape Cod Hospital showed four today with one in the ICU. That's a high number for them. Again, that could be related to a, sim to a, to a single source, to a long-term care. Um, Falmouth Hospital was as high as three with no one in the ICU over the past week. Um, we're, we're currently at zero. Their reported numbers. That, was a re not, that wasn't reported on 917. I forgot to change the slide. That was yesterday, uh, the 24th data. Um, you can see the hospitalizations had a few days in September where we had a high number of hospitalizations and a low, you know, it could drop off and then sort of uh, a trend back up. So that sort of does fluctuate. And again, it's, it's going to be incidence sp specific for the most part. Um, as far as ICU, um, the number's down six from August 7th and down about 120 from June. Uh, it's at 75. Intubation's around, tw it's been in the 20s for some time, give or take. Uh, we're down 82 total from uh, the count back on June, minus 10 roughly from August 7th. So that's flattened out to sort of 70, 20, 60, 30, somewhere in that range uh, pretty consistently, consistently over the last uh, couple months. Uh, Long-term cares, uh, 6,000, so about 65.6% of all deaths are re related to long-term care facilities. Um, the numbers are, were fairly stable. Uh, I think the, uh, the Woodbriar did have a case um, this past week, um, but we've been pretty stable in our nursing facilities for the most part, um, and so that's the uh, update on long-term care. Again, COVID testing itself doesn't, hasn't changed. There's still drive-through at the Falmouth Hospital. Uh, use the call center number at 862-5595 for, our, uh, for a, an appointment that's done by your physician. Um, there's also a uh, walk-in available, like the walk-in clinic at Convenient MD, the Community Health Center of Cape Cod and Mashpee, and then the CVS in East Falmouth can also do a test. Um, you know, we do have an availability of tests since, you know, we're doing 1,800 tests every two weeks. That's a high number. So we're, do, we're testing a lot here, and, and part of that's because we have a lot of healthcare facilities that are doing routine tests. That's a part of the reason why we have high tests is we have the hospital here, um, and we also have a lot of long-term care, and they're doing an aggressive testing of, of staff and patients, and so that number it tends to keep it on the high side. Uh, and again, more testing the better. Um, but that's where we are, so it hasn't been much of a change as far as COVID testing is concerned. Uh, types of COVID tests, again, antibody is just going to tell you a past infection. It is rapid. It's considered a suspect in MDPH. We don't do a lot of contact tracing on that. The antigen, we will contact trace. It's considered a probable. Like we saw in the previous slide with the county, you see some probables. It's rapid. Um, it's not nearly as accurate. Um, I've heard as much as 30% inaccurate, but it does in indicate, it, you know, it is there. So we would recommend anybody who gets an antigen, antigen test to get a PCR test in addition and you should uh, isolate yourself until you get your PCR results. So treat the antigen test seriously and then you know, isolate until you can get your PCR test done and the results from there. So what that does is it detects antigens being produced to fight the current infection. It just uh, doesn't have quite the accuracy. The gold standard is the PCR molecular test, which is actually detecting viral RNA or DNA. Uh, it takes around 24 hours to several days um, to get a result. But it does tell you that there's an active infection. They're actually finding the virus in your saliva or in your nasal passages. And that's the only way to have a confirmed case. That's what the Department of Public Health has confirmed. And this is going to be rapidly changing. We're really looking at, not me personally, but the, the, the world's looking at, you know, quick, cheap, accurate PC, uh, uh, viral sort of tests. And uh, there's coming down the pipeline, but uh, they're not quite here yet. So we're still status quo with how we do the testing. As far as flu shots, um, good news out of Australia, I, I read in, uh, recently that they've had the lowest incidence of flu, and this is their winter months, that they've had in memory, which makes total sense. If you're socially distancing and wearing a mask to help fight COVID, it's going to work against the flu. Um, but then, but 
you know, we still need to get our flu shot so we're not clogging up the hospitals or, you know, being confused on whether it's COVID or not. You know, you don't want to have flu-like symptoms and worry whether you've got the flu or COVID. So there's going to be demand for flu shots. So tomorrow, if you want to take a nice ride out to the Barnstable County on 6A, which this time of year is real nice, um, I'll be there from 8 to 12. No appointment necessary. You can get a flu shot. Okay, it's done all, uh, we're doing it as, as, uh, as a countywide flu clinic. So all the towns will be involved. Anybody on Barnstable, in Barnstable County can get one. Um, it's going to be anybody over the age of six months. Okay, there'll be state vaccine available for the uninsured. There'll be the high dose flu vaccine available for over 65. And for the rest, uh, it'll be the quadrivalent uh, influenza vaccine, which is designed to protect against four different viruses uh, of the different strains. And so if you can do that tomorrow, uh, there's no appointment necessary. You can drive right up and get it tomorrow um, between 8 and 12. It'll be a yeah, drive through setup. Um, and so, you know, all the health agents will be there to help get, you know, get everybody through. You don't have to get out of your car. Um, there is a form at the, on Barnstable County's website if you can pre-fill that out. Um, you know, that would really help uh, speed things up. You know, get, ask for your insurance, your, your name, your address, and so forth. Um, as far as Falmouth's concerned, we're looking at doing the same sort of setup, um, it, but it'll be by pre-registration required. Uh, the VNA who do, conducts our flu clinics for us wants the pre-registration so they know how many vaccines to buy. Um, you know, it's a different year this year. We consistently would give anywhere from 125 to 160 doses on a given year. Um, things are a little different this year. There might be, you know, we think there's going to be more demand for flu shots. Um, you know, you still go to your CVSs and you still go to your Shaws and Stop and Shop, um, but there may be a lot of demand for it. It makes it a little difficult to get the shot. So by pre-registering, we can get a handle on how many shots we need to order. Um, and we're going to do this as a drive-through, and we're still going to work throughout the bugs before we get to that. But you'll see some stuff posted if you want to wait for that clinic. But if you can make it tomorrow, uh, that might be the simplest uh, thing for you to do. Again, your local pharmacies, your physicians, your pediatricians are still going to be working on doing the normal flu clinics as always. So, you know, CVSs and the convenient MDs and Shaw's and Stop and Shop and so forth. Um, but if you want to wait for the, the Falmouth Clinic, um, I, I will have some more information out in the next couple of weeks, hopefully on it, and then uh, with a tentative date of October 26th. Uh, again, the social distance and face coverings. Our complaints have gone down. Um, you know, I think by now we should all know what to do. Um, again, continued dil diligence with social distancing and face coverings, especially as school opens up, we want to keep the numbers squashed down. Hand washing, hand sanitizing, uh, quarantining upon arrival when travel, uh, voidering gatherings in parties, indoors especially, without social distancing, staying home when ill, knowing your body and not, not coming to work, not trying to gut through it. Uh, any, any businesses that have state guidance, I meant to ask this, is there's been some new guidance um, uh, as far as food service goes, I just didn't have a chance to make the slide, and that is that any uh, the bar service, you can open your bar as long as you have a divider, uh, and, uh, social distancing and a, and a plexiglass divider between the bartender who can't serve you at the bar but can seat you at the bar and serve you through uh, a waitress or waiter. And um, there still need to be social distancing between groupings. Um, that's going to be allowed in the guidance. Uh, restaurants will be getting that email this afternoon from uh, my department just to give them some update on the guidance. And also self-service beverages. So, you know, if you are used to going down to your local convenience store to get a cup of coffee, starting Monday they'll be allowed to go do that with some, some guidance. So there's some changes there. Um, the, main, the main thing is that, um, you know, the, everybody follows the guidance. If you own a business and you, you're open to the public following the state guidance, um, we've, we've helped numerous businesses get through it, so if you have questions, you can always call the health department. Um, so nothing's, that, that's the main two changes that we've got this week. Uh, but this, again, the social distancing and the face coverings, of course, key to keeping the counts down. Uh, it's also key that if it does transmit, it transmitted at a lower dose, which tends to make better outcomes. And obviously, we, we don't want to undo the hard work that we've already done, especially with school opening. You know, a lot of parents out there listening that, you know, definitely want, if they want to have the kids in person, we've got to make sure that we're doing a good job at home. Um, you know, and it's important that if you're, if you're, if you, COVID meets, you know, makes it to you um, and that you're not sending the kids to school, that we all know what we're doing with that. Um, and in terms of schools, again, we've been working, the health department, the VNA, and the schools, nurses, 
I've been working hard to get uh, our coordination going so that the VNA can call the schools directly, the schools can call the VNA directly. You have, uh, we have a nurse here at the health department, myself, um, so that we've uh, able to jump on situations as they arise. In terms of our recap, the state metrics are a slight increase. They've been relatively flat, but a slight increase. I mean, we've been high for ourselves over the last 21 days or so, with some of those being uh, travel-related, um, some of them being locally obtained. Uh, we're still in the phase uh, three, step one for the state. Um, and again, we just need to continue with our diligence um, with social distancing and face masking. So that's it for this week, and then uh, we'll, we'll see you again next Friday. Thanks.